So in starting developing the technology, the first uh, area was to address how to release the hydrogen from natural water and do it economically and satisfy the first major requirement of NASA. And of course, what the first uh, thing we did in the scientific area is that you always got to learn to ask the right question. Now, uh, in the prior art, uh, example one, we demonstrated this technology under 101, U.S. Uh, C, uh, section 101, the U.S. Patent Office says that whenever you present something, uh, you must show on an operability, otherwise you do not get the issuance of the patent. When we had showed them the technology pertaining to water, the first thing that they, when they recognized this, is why has no one else thought about this technology before? Well, there were several reasons I gave them. Number one, if you had looked at the scripture, Job 38, verse 22 and 23, the Lord said that the knowledge would come out of time of great trouble. And if this is not a time of great trouble, I don't know what is. The second one is that the reason why Faraday did not discover the electrical polarization process is because he needed several modern day inventions and he needed some prior knowledge. One of the things he needed was stainless steel, the invention of stainless steel 304 material, which is chemically entered to the process. If you expose it to hydrogen and oxygen gases uh, in a water bath exposed to voltage, it does not have a chemical in a reaction. That's why you said platinum before, because platinum's in and to the same process. Well, platinum is extremely ultra expensive. Yeah. And it will break down under the, un, under the conditions of exposing to hydrogen and oxygen, some of them. Okay, so stainless steel became a very economical material to use. Uh, matter of fact, under actual lab certification testing, the longevity of the stainless steel material is 0 0.0001 per year. So the fuel cell uh, is just as good as the time you fired up to 20 years going up to 10,000 years. And if any of you guys live over 10,000 years, you come back and tell me, I want to tell you learn your secret. So the stainless steel material gave us the abilities that we now have a component we do not need to replace. We set up a non-chemical environment in order to release the hydrogen from the water. Okay, so we now have, uh, we don't have to replace the parts. If you ever look at the prior arts and electrolysis uh, processes, you will see that their, their electrodes are tremendous mass and size. If a brilliant engineer could get a car to run down the road on electrolysis, he may get it to last for maybe a minute to five minutes or so, but all of that mass size of electrodes will decompose. So inherently, the electrolysis process did not comply to the law of economics because it was a self-destructive unit and it, we had to add chemicals to it. Now, if you had an electrolysis process and had to add chemicals to it, and let's say you did get a car to run down the road, then you would have to spend billions of dollars to try to come up with chemical refinery plants to be able to try to even support the gas supply um, uh, levels in the United States. And that would cost billions of dollars over 20 to 30 to 40 year period of time. And EPA would not allow you to dump the chemicals under the ground. So electrolysis process does not comply the law of economics and does not be able to solve the problem. It's a self-destructive unit. So we had to come up with a non-chemical device come up with a way that we could release the hydrogen from water, and if we can do this, water has a phenomenal amount of energy source in the form of hydrogen, and if you burn it, its energy release is two and a half times more powerful than that of gasoline. So the first answer we needed to find was how do we economically split the water molecule? Now the key was how do we switch off the covalent bonding of the water molecule, and so we would address what takes place. Well, when the two hydrogen atoms... Can I check one sec? Yes. Could you sometimes, when using a technical term, just describe it more fundamentally for those who haven't got the technical basis, like covalent bonds? Yeah, I'm well. Yeah, I'll get to that. Um, first, uh, was to address how do we switch off covalent bonding of the water molecule and do it economically. And uh, when you consider the formation of the water molecule, then when the two hydrogen atoms link to the oxygen atom to form the water molecule, under the law of physics, something's got to happen, right? Now what actually happens is that this outer orbit of the oxygen atom uh, normally has only six electrons in it. But this particular orbit will allow us up to eight electrons to be occupied at one particular time. And as a result of this, this now allows the two hydrogen atoms to link up with the oxygen atom to form the water molecule to go into stable state. Now on the law of physics that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, something's got to happen. Now what actually happens is that when the two hydrogen atoms link up to the oxygen atom, and the oxygen atom accepts, accepts the hydrogen electron to set up the covalent bonding, then something's got to happen. 
And what happens is that under normal state, there's eight electrons in the oxygen atom, and then there's eight protons. But when the oxygen atom accepts the two hydrogen electrons, then there's, there's an imbalance that occurs. And what now takes place is we have now 10 electrons, but we still have only eight protons. And as a result of this, the oxygen atom takes on a negative electric charge. Now, since the hydrogen atom is now sharing its, its electron to set up the covalent bonding, then the positive charge proton swings the hydrogen atom to the positive charge. Therefore, the atoms of the water molecule takes on electrical charge. Now, that was the second major thing that um, Faraday would have had to know, is in fact that the, that the bonding uh, the two unlike atoms of the water molecule is actually being held together by an electrical attraction force. And that electrical attraction force is equivalent to the two shared electrons. So in other words, once it's all combined together, the total charge is zero. Right. If the water molecule is stabilized to net electrical charge zero, but its atoms are opposite electrically charged. Now, another way to verify this, you can send a microwave, the question is, what happens when you send a microwave energy to water, and why does it heat up the water and cause it the water molecules to agitate? Well, what happens is the microwave is swinging the, the atoms of the water molecules because they have a electrical charge applied to them, and that's why microwave energy will heat up the water and superheat it very, very quickly. All right, so the key is now, that what's holding these atoms together is this electrical bonding force Q and Q prime. And it is only equivalent to the two shared electrons because on the law of physics says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So we know now that uh, it was very obvious then to say, hey, if that's the case uh, and these atoms do not take on an electrical attraction, then in fact it was obvious that if I've exposed the, the water molecule to a high external high voltage field, then we could pull apart the water molecule and do it economically. And uh, uh, the question is, does these unlike atoms take on an electrical attraction field? And they do not. And the reason why they do not do this is because the oxygen atom, those electrons are paired together, paired together and swing in, op uh, in opposite direction as they pair together. They cancel out their electromagnetic field, and as a result, there is no electrical attraction force between the two unlike atoms. So all we now have to do is to overcome the electrical attraction force of these two atoms based on Faraday's, and I mean based on um, Coulomb's and Newton's second law of electrical force with an electronic circuit. So what we had done now is set up and put an electric voltage field here, and electric voltage field here. this way. So now we set up an electrical uh, field and expose the water molecule to a high electric voltage field and restrict the amps. Then, if this now is set up as a B plus voltage zone and it sets up as a B minus voltage zone, then under the law of, uh, of opposite charges, we'll do what? Like charges will yeah. repel yeah. and yeah. Unlike, yeah. unlike will attract. 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 So therefore, if I put a B plus voltage field here, would not now the negative charge oxygen atom be attracted to that voltage field? Yes. Now, likewise, at the same time, would not, if I put a B minus voltage field here, would not the positive charge hydrogen and oxygen now be attracted to the, to the negative voltage field. And as a result now, we're using voltage as a potential energy source and pulling apart. The water molecule starts to elongate. As you start to elongate the water molecule, you're now changing the timeshare rate of the electron. And as a result of that, you pull apart the water molecule. Now, there's, there's another phenomenon that is happening also, is that in the heuristic of water, it is a dielectric liquid. Okay. Now, in the electrolysis process, it was required that the two best patents ever issued in the electrolysis process 